Why are there so many ways to return an element in Link? Hit the subscribe button and stay tuned as we go through each way and explain the differences. So we've created a list of my records and within the my record class, it has a read only property of ID. We pass in an ID in the constructor's parameter and set the ID property to the parameter. We want to get one record and there's a few ways we can do this. The first way is to use the first method. So we're going to output it to the console. We're going to call my records dot first and then we're going to get the ID of two. And then to the console, we're going to print the ID. That has outputted two for us. Now with first, if the record doesn't exist, it goes ahead and throws an exception. So the exception is sequence contains no matching element. Now we can fix that by calling the first or default. Now in this instance, it's going to throw an exception if we don't put a question mark there. But the first or default, it will return null if there's no instance there. So we can see it's returned nothing to the console application, but it hasn't thrown an exception. Now we've also got single as well. So if we give that a go, so if we call single, so what this does is it will always output one record. If there's more than one record or there's zero records, then it will throw an exception. So if we do a condition of ID equals two and we output the ID, run the application, the console app will print two for us. If we change that though to four, then it's going to throw an exception. Sequence contains no matching element. And if we just get a single element and there's more than one, so if we take away the condition, we get the error that says sequence contains more than one element. Now, if there's no elements, we can use the single or default again. And then we put a condition in there, xid equals four, and that will return null for us. So if we run the console application, it's outputting nothing, but it's not throwing an exception. Now we're going to add some benchmarking to see which method performs the best. To do that, we go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, and Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. Search for benchmark.net and install that into our console application. To set up benchmarking, we've created a My Service class, and within that, we've got a property with a list of My Records. We've added a couple of records within it. We've also set up separate methods for each of the ways of getting a record. To set up benchmarking, first of all, on the class, we need to set the memory diagnoser attribute. Then for each of the methods that we wish to benchmark, we need to set the benchmark attribute for it. To run the benchmark, we need to get the benchmark runner class, and within that, we call the run method. We get the type of class that we've set up the benchmark for, which is the my class service. Now to run it, we go ahead in the package manager console we call .NET run hyphen hyphen configuration, it needs to be in release. The results are in. We can see that the memory allocated for each method is the same. If we have a look at the mean times, we can see that the first or default is the quickest with 20 nanoseconds, followed by the first at 21, then we've got the single or default at 31 and the single at 33. We'd expect the first to be quicker than the single, and the reason being is that the single has to look out for more than one record. Watch our video on how to master your .NET interview next if you want to challenge yourself with C-sharp coding challenges. We'll go through some of the challenges available and how you can answer them. And as a bonus, we'll tell you where you can find more challenges so you can practice and excel in your next .NET job interview.